this video we are going to learn concept of periodicity for continuous time and related discrete time signals let's consider three examples so i will consider the example number 1 where where x of t is given as cos 2 pi by 12 into t as we know we can compare this is standard equation to get the value of omega so comparing with cos omega t will give me omega equal to 2 pi by 12 omega is given as 2 pi by t where t is the time period so if i substitute over here omega equal to 2 pi by t i will get time period t equal to 12 so what i can say from this is x of t is a periodic signal with fundamental time period which i will denote as t0 equal to 12 it means signal will repeat for t equal to 24 t equal to 36 like that basically a multiple of 12 so the lowest value of t will be first multiple of 12 that is nothing but 12 so hence i can consider x of t is a periodic signal with fundamental time period 12 what we are going to consider next this x of t is converted into x of n meaning from continuous time domain i am converting the sequence into discrete time domain the process we call as sampling so what we will do over here we will have a x of t signal which is a continuous time signal we are sampling it means we are just considering the signal values for integer independent variable in order to get x of n doing so x of t will get converted into x of n and in this case it will be cos 2 pi by 12 into n so t variable will get changed into n where n is a integer so that continuous time signal converted into discrete time now we need to check whether after doing a sampling periodic signal will remain periodic in time domain as far as discrete time is concerned let's check so here also we compare the signal with cos omega n so give omega as 2 pi by 12 here omega is 2 pi divided by time period and in discrete time 
we denote the time period by capital N. So I will get omega as 2 pi by N. So equation becomes 2 pi by N equal to 2 pi by 12. After solving this, I will get N as 12. So what I can say over here, this x of n, which is a sampled version of x of t, is also periodic with the same time period, which is equal to 12. So I can say x of n is also periodic signal with fundamental time period. which is n0 nothing but 12. So, in short, if I would like to draw a summary of this, I can say x of t is a cosine signal. So, cosine is nothing but one kind of a sign which we consider the shifted sign. So, let us take something like this, you have x of t. which is having a fundamental time period. In this case, T0 equal to 12. This signal I have sampled. And we will get a discrete time signal x of n which will repeat after every 12 sample meaning we will have the signal like this it can go up to 11 and over here it will start once again so if i were to draw the signal plot, it will be like this. For n equal to 0, it will have the value let's take 1 or in this case, I can say the time axis is somewhere here because it is a cosine. So, y variable will be like this. So, I will get a discrete time signal like this. For n equal to 0, it will have the value 1 and it will keep on decreasing so that for n equal to 3 it becomes 0. So, something like this we should get. And in the end, you will get for n equal to 12, the value will be 1 once again. So, in this process, what I can say, the shape is approximately same as x of t with the values repeating after every 12 samples. So, over here, the time period will be from 0 to 11. And if you count the samples, that will be 12 in number. So, what I can say in this case, x of t was periodic. By doing sample, x of n will also remain periodic. The most important thing here to observe is both of them are having same fundamental period. So, this is the case 1. Let us consider second case. Over here, I will take x of t as 
cos 8 pi upon 31 into t. So once again, it's the sine sort of signal. It must be a periodic. So let's quickly find out what is this fundamental time period. So first step is comparing with the standard equation. which is cos omega t in order to get omega which is equal to 8 pi upon 31. As we know omega is 2 pi by t which will give you 8 pi by 31. In the end if I solve this I will get th 62 by 8 because pi gets cancelled and that is nothing but 31 upon 4. So I can say T is 31 by 4. So pertaining to this, I can say this X of T is a periodic signal. with fundamental time period which is nothing but T0 equal to 31 divided by 4. Now let's consider sample version of this X of T which is X of N. So by doing a sampling we will get the sampled version of x of t which we call as x of n. So x of n equal cos 8 pi by 31 into n. Obviously n has to be a integer. Now, here if we compare with the standard equation and get the value of time period, let us see what we will get in the end. So, we will get omega as 8 pi upon 31. So, once again we know for discrete time omega is 2 pi by n. So, in the end if I solve I will get 2 pi by n equal to 8 pi by 31 which implies n equal to 62 by 8. And after cancelling 2 from numerator and denominator and we will get 31 by 4. So here there is a problem. Why? Because to have a discrete time signal whether it is a periodic or not, I should only deal with integer numbers. Right now 31 by 4 is coming around to be 7.75 which is not an integer. So what we can say? This is not a periodic signal? Absolutely wrong because though it is not an integer but it can be converted into an integer after doing some calculation to this n. So what calculation we need to do? Let us see, over here I can get an integer if I multiply this with a 4 and why it is possible because this n is a ratio of 2 integers. If this is not a ratio of 2 integers there is no question of having the signal exist for the periodic 1. So for this purpose what I can say one important thing for the discrete time signal is n must be 
a ratio of two integers in order to prove the periodicity of the discrete time signal so what i can say since n is the ratio of two integers definitely x of n is a periodic signal So now x of n is a periodic signal. We need to check what is its fundamental time period. So for that purpose, what we will do, we will plot the signal with respect to n, and maybe we will take the n value from zero, one, two, three, four. Let's take up to. Thirty, then thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, like this. So, if you plot this against the value of n, we will get something like this. Some value will go over here. Let's take x of one. This is one, which is but obvious x of zero. Here you will get x of two like this. We we'll surprised to notice that you will get same value, which is x of zero, which is equal to one at n equal to thirty one. So we will get. Signal value at n equal to thirty one, which is same as x of zero, which is equal to one. Likewise, signal will repeat itself after thirty one sample, meaning x equal to thirty two will get same as x of one, and this will be continuous. So, what conclusion we can draw from here? This is a time, or these many samples will decide your fundamental time period. In this case, it is thirty-one. Meaning, after every thirty-one sample, signal repeats itself. So, in the end, what I can say? For a discrete signal, if n is a ratio of two integers, we have decided if it is a ratio of two integers. Then it is a periodic signal, but its fundamental time period will be nothing but numerator of that ratio. So it's a very important point. For example, over here I'm having n as thirty-one divided by four. So 
So the numerator of this ratio is 31. Hence, the fundamental time period is 31. Lastly, we will relate continuous time signal with this discrete. So we got x of n like this, which we have proved to be continuous for capital N equal to 31, meaning from 0 to 30, whatever samples we will get will repeat itself at from 31, 32, 33 and so on. So the signal will look like this. So x of 0 same as x of 31, x of 1 is same as x of 32 and so on. So what I can say, this signal will have the fundamental time period n0 equal to 31 like this. This is, we are talking for x of n. x of n is a sampled version of x of t. So let's consider like this, I will have an axis of time which is starting from 0 and go up to 31. So let's consider this point as 31 by 4, this point as 2 times 31 by 4 and this has to be 3 times 31 by 4, meaning for a 31 number, if I consider the fundamental time period of a continuous time signal, I need to multiply by 4. What does that mean? 4 cycles of x of t will be completed from 0 to 31. So, you will have a signal like this. So this is x of t and the fundamental time for this is 31 by 4. So what I can say from here, in this particular example, I can say x of t is also periodic, x of n is also periodic. Though x of n is a sampled version of x of t, still it will have different fundamental time period. For a continuous time, it is 31 by 4 and for discrete time, it is 31. So, this is the case 2 which will decide x of t is a periodic, x of n is also a periodic, but this time the fundamental time periods are different. Whereas in case 1, x of t, x of n both are periodic with same fundamental time period that is nothing but 12. Let us consider the third case. I consider a continuous time signal x of t as cos t by 6. Comparing with standard equation, which is nothing but cos omega t to give omega as 1 by 6. Omega is a frequency related to the time period with this formula so that I will get time period t equal to 12 pi. 
it is but obvious being a trigonometric function i can say x of t is a periodic signal with fundamental time period t0 equal to 12 pi let's sample this signal so cos t by 6 which is nothing but our x of t If pass through sampling process in order to get sampled version x of n, which is nothing but cos n by six. So let's find out whether this x of n is periodic or not. So x of n is cos n by six. Comparing with the standard equation, which is cos omega n, so give omega one by six. Since we know omega is two pi by n, so in the end I will get n equal to twelve pi. Now, pi I can consider as a number three point one four two. So approximately, this equal to twelve multiplied by three point one four two. So definitely, this is not an integer. So the condition one for the discrete time to be a periodic. It's failing over here. What I can say, n is not the ratio of two integers. Hence, x of n is not a periodic signal. So in this case, what is happening? Continuous time signal x of t is a periodic one, but its sample version is not a periodic signal. So whenever we need to find out a periodic signal or not for a discrete time sequence, all the three examples or all the three cases we have to keep in mind. And two very important points we have discussed. One is n has to be a ratio of two integers. For a signal to be a periodic one, and if it is a ratio of two integers, then numerator of the ratio will become your fundamental time period. Thank you.